After my last relationship ended, I was reluctant to start dating again, but my friend convinced me to give Tinder a try. You just have to weed out the weirdos, she said. Easier said than done, I thought. Against my better judgment, I created a profile and was instantly overwhelmed by messages and potential matches. Finally, one guy's witty banter stood out. Adam. We exchanged funny messages for a week before deciding to meet up at a bar downtown. Adam looked just like his photos. Tall and athletic with warm brown eyes. We hit it off right away, talking over drinks. When he invited me back to his place after, I only hesitated for a second before agreeing. He seemed totally normal, and I was smitten. But as soon as we walked into his apartment, something felt off. There were holes punched in the walls. Knives lying around, massive holes carved out of the furniture stuffing. My defenses shot up, but I reasoned maybe he had anger issues and tried not to judge too quickly. Adam noticed my uneasy glances and laughed. Sorry about the mess. My roommate is kind of nuts. I've been trying to get him evicted. His calm response softened my worries a bit. He showed me photos of his dog, offered me a drink. I started to relax again. We settled on the couch to watch a movie, but soon got distracted kissing. Things were heating up when I suddenly heard faint crying. It almost sounded like a child or even an animal whimpering. When I asked Adam about it, his expression darkened. It's nothing, probably just the neighbors, he said sharply, but the crying continued. Certain now it was coming from inside. I got up to investigate. Adam tried to stop me, but I pushed past him following the sound down the hall. Behind a closed door, the cries got louder, more frantic. My hand trembled as I reached for the knob. Just before I turned it, Adam grabbed me roughly from behind. Don't go in there, he yelled. He yelled. Shocked at his aggression, I fought him off and sprinted for the front door. He chased after me, but I made it outside, running down to the street in sheer panic. His angry shouts echoed behind me until I was far enough away that they faded into the night. Still shaking, I called the police to report Adam. An officer came to take my statement and search the apartment, but found no signs of anyone else living there. Defeated, I went home. Terrified, Adam would track me down. I deleted my Tinder account immediately. It wasn't until weeks later when I saw Adam's story on the local news that I learned the horrible truth. He had been kidnapping women and keeping them locked up in his apartment for weeks before killing them. The roommate he mentioned didn't exist. Inside that closed room was where he hid their starved, tortured bodies. I was nearly another of Adam's victims, lured by fishy charm and good looks. He's now in jail awaiting trial for multiple murders. But I still have panic attacks if I hear a crying sound or see a tall athletic man nearby. My close call will haunt me forever. A grim reminder that you truly never know the darkness. Someone hides inside. I'm sticking to meeting men the old-fashioned way from now on. After taking a break from Tinder for a few months, I decided to give it another shot. Reluctantly, I set up a new profile chatting with a few decent guys at first, but no one really caught my interest until I matched with Lucas. His profile photo showed a ruggedly handsome guy hiking through the woods. He said he loved nature and being outdoors. I was instantly drawn to him as a fellow nature lover. We messaged back and forth for a week before agreeing to meet at a cafe downtown. Lucas looked just like his pictures with warm brown eyes and rough stubble on his chiseled jaw. We sat chatting for hours, really hitting it off. When he invited me for a hike that weekend, I didn't hesitate to say yes. I was pretty smitten already. We met early Saturday morning at the trailhead to a secluded mountain reserve. The peaceful forest surroundings put me instantly at ease. At first, we hiked while chatting about our lives and interests. But the deeper we went down the trail, the quieter Lucas grew, giving short clipped responses. I started to notice strange things too. Human, like scratches on some trees, mysterious piles of stones stacked in patterns. Was someone else out here? I asked Lucas if hikers were allowed in this reserve. 
His terse answer, we won't run into anyone else. A sense of unease washed over me, but we were so deep into the dense forest now that I didn't feel safe trying to turn back alone. I considered making an excuse to head home, but talked myself out of overreacting. Lucas seemed trustworthy, if a bit eccentric. But the further we hiked, the more my gut screamed that something was very wrong. The trail ended at a sheer rock face scattered with cave openings. Lucas led me inside one where extensive drawings covered the walls. Many depicted violent scenes full of blood and gore. I pretended to admire them while discreetly scanning for cell service. It's amazing what you've done with this cave. I said, backing slowly toward the exit, but Lucas blocked the way out. Not just me. My family has been out here for centuries, he said with a deranged look in his eye. Suddenly, the pieces clicked into place. Those weren't just random hiker's marks on the trees. When he turned to rummage through a backpack, I bolted outside, running blindly through the trees. He crashed after me, screaming for me to come back, but adrenaline pushed me faster. I eventually emerged onto a road where a park ranger was driving by. I frantically flagged him down, and he radioed for help once I shared my frightening tale. But when police returned to the cave, it was wiped clean. No sign Lukes had ever been there. With no evidence, the officials thought I was just an overreacting woman who'd gotten lost in the woods. But I know what I experienced. Lucas is still out there, lurking among the forest trails, waiting for the next naive girl to lure into his lair. I deleted my Tinder profile and avoid hiking alone. It was a terrifying lesson. Don't always trust someone's profile. The charming outdoorsman was not who I thought he was. After taking a long break from dating apps, I decided to give Tinder one more try. I matched with a guy named Zach, who seemed friendly and down to earth in our messages. We made plans to meet for dinner at a pub downtown. When I arrived, Zach was already seated at a table. He looked just like his photos. Tall, muscular with short brown hair and dimpled smile. We hit it off chatting over beers. The conversation flowed easily, and he seemed very interested in learning all about me. After dinner, Zach invited me back to his place to watch a movie. I hesitated at first, but his place was nearby, and he appeared totally normal so far. I agreed, following him on the short walk to his apartment building. Upstairs, his apartment was sparsely furnished but clean. He offered me a glass of wine and we settled on the couch, starting up a comedy movie but we soon got distracted, laughing, and flirting. Things started to get romantic, when suddenly I heard a strange metallic clanking sound. What was that? I asked, pulling away. Oh, probably just the neighbors or pipes, Zach replied casually, drawing me back in. But soon there was another odd bang, louder this time. He seemed to be growing irritated with my questions, insisting it was nothing, uneasy now. I went to grab my purse, telling Zach I should get home. That's when I noticed a door off the kitchen I hadn't seen before. The noises seemed to be coming from behind it. Curiosity overtook me, and I walked over despite Zach's protests. When I tried the handle, he grabbed my wrist aggressively. I yanked free of his grip, and the door swung open, revealing a soundproofed room containing violent tools, restraints, blood staining the walls, my heart dropped as I stumbled backwards in shock. Zach yelled at me to wait, but I was already racing for the front door. I could hear him giving chase as I flew down the stairs and outside. I sprinted down the street at full speed without looking back until I reached the safety of my car. I drove straight to the police station, but they found no sign of the sinister room when they searched, nor any reason to arrest Zach. But I know what I saw. Eventually, another woman reported Zach for stalking and his true predatory nature was exposed. He was eventually convicted as a sex offender. I still shudder when I think how close I came to being another of his victims, lured by a charming date. It taught me an invaluable lesson. Don't ignore warning signs or give men from dating apps too much blind trust, even if they seem totally harmless at first.
You truly never know someone's dark secrets. Going forward, I'll follow my instincts and be far more cautious. I decided to give Tinder one last try after a friend assured me the good guys far outnumbered the weirdos. I tentatively set up a profile and soon matched with Dustin. His photo showed a clean-cut guy with dimpled cheeks and kind eyes. He seemed sweet in our messages, asking thoughtful questions and making me laugh. When we planned to meet for coffee, I felt optimistic for once about a Tinder date, but standing outside the cafe where we'd agreed to meet, I got a nervous pit in my stomach as I scoured the sidewalk for Dustin's face. He strode up right on time, smiling wide and seemed polite and charming during our date. After we'd finished our coffees, Dustin asked if I'd join him for a bite nearby. I didn't see any reason not to. The date was going well and he appeared totally normal so far. We walked a few blocks to his chosen restaurant and were seated at a small candle, lit table. Dustin became much quieter and intense once we sat down. The funny, laid-back guy from earlier was gone, replaced by brooding seriousness. When I asked light questions or made jokes to break the tension, he gave terse one, word responses. My instincts told me to cut the date short, but I ignored the nagging feeling. I was probably just overreacting, I reasoned. But the longer the date went on, the more uneasy I felt under Dustin's watchful gaze. When I declined dessert, he insisted on walking me home. Every time I politely tried to say no, he seemed to get angry. Feeling trapped, I agreed, if only to avoid upsetting him on the dark walk home. We reached my apartment building and I quickly said goodnight, turning to the door. But Dustin grabbed my arm in a vice-like grip. He said he couldn't wait to see me again through a chilling grin. I broke free and rushed inside before he could follow. His incessant calls and texts began just minutes later, begging me to go out again. They quickly turned threatening when I didn't respond. I blocked his number, terrified. A background check confirmed my fears. Dustin had a record of stalking and assaulting women he met online. He was arrested soon after for attacking another woman outside her home. My gut instinct had been right all along, but I ignored it, almost becoming another of his victims. I deactivated my Tinder after that night. Dustin looked so wholesome and harmless in his profile, but behind the dimpled smile lurked a predatory monster. It was the last lesson I needed. Nothing is as it seems on dating sites. From now on, I'll trust my instincts, not just friendly photos and charming messages. Swiping for dates seems fun until you end up in a killer's crosshairs. After taking a long break from Tinder, I decided to re-download it and give dating another try. I matched with a guy named Aaron, whose profile showed pictures of him hiking, playing guitar, and dressed up for a wedding. He seemed outgoing and adventurous in our messages and asked me out right away. We planned to meet for a drink at a bar downtown. When I arrived, Aaron was sitting at the counter chatting with the bartender like they were old friends. He looked just like his pictures. Wavy brown hair, dimpled chin, muscular arms. He greeted me with a warm hug, and his blue eyes sparkled charmingly as he smiled. Over drinks, Aaron revealed he was new to town and trying to meet people. He asked thoughtful questions about my job, friends, and interests, appearing very invested in learning all about my life. I found him easy to talk to, and we closed down the bar together making plans to go out again. On our second date, hiking through a state park, I noticed Aaron become withdrawn and tense when other hikers passed by. He relaxed only when we reached an isolated ridge. I caught him watching me oddly instead of the incredible views. Uneasy feelings started creeping in, but I brushed them off. When Aaron invited me to his place after for homemade dinner and a movie, I hesitated. But he'd been so friendly thus far, I finally agreed, following him back to a small cottage tucked away in the woods outside town. Something felt off inside. The windows were completely blacked out and bizarre items lined the shelves. Hunting knives, 
coils of rope, assorted skulls, and bones. Aaron didn't seem to think it was unusual decor. My instinct screamed at me to get out fast. I made an excuse that I had to leave, backing quickly to the door. But Aaron grabbed my wrist and shoved me down the basement stairs before I could react. Dazed at the bottom, I found myself locked inside a soundproof concrete room stained with blood splatters. Adrenaline pumping, I pounded on the door, yelling until my voice went hoarse, trying desperately to kick it open. After what felt like hours, the door swung open and several police officers burst in. Having tracked my phone location, Aaron was arrested on sight. Searching his house revealed a torture chamber and remains of missing women buried outside. Aaron had lured them all through Tinder under fake names and abducted them. I nearly became another of his victims. After that nightmare, I steer clear of online dating. Aaron's charming, outdoorsy profile was a facade hiding his deranged dark side. He's now in jail, but I still have panic attacks imagining what he planned to do to me in that soundproof cell. My Tinder days are over, that's for sure. Swiping right almost cost me my life.